Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and the conclusion of this special two-part study entitled, The Land Belongs to Israel. This study is very important in these last days as more and more Christians follow pernicious lies and heresies, denying the infallibility of the Bible while rejecting sound doctrine. Our email is constantly full of messages from people distorting the Bible to deny the pre-trib rapture, dispensations, salvation by grace, eternal security, and attacking the biblical prophecies of Israel returning to her land in time for the Antichrist and the return of Jesus Christ at the end of the seven year 70th week of Daniel. So we hope you will listen to both parts and share this message with others by telling them about bbfohio.com or sending them the YouTube or sermon audio link so they can listen free of charge. And that's what we're seeing right now, today, those Jews in the land. It's future tense. Tense. If this was fulfilled in Joshua's day, why would Jesus be promising it in 30 to 32 AD for the future? Over and over and over, it wasn't fulfilled in Joshua's day. Israel is the fig tree. Hosea 9.10 says, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. It means from the very beginning, God has looked at Israel like the fig tree. The prophet Isaiah foretold of two regatherings into the land. He's writing in 586, and so one's going to take, care, take place after that, and then there's going to be a second one which took place after this 70 AD dispersion, and it began in 1881 and was uh, culminated in 1948. Isaiah 11:11, 11, 11, and it shall come to pass in that day, he's talking about the future, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left. Second time. There was once, they brought them back just in time for Jesus. They were dispersed in 70 AD. They've been brought back a second time. Hosea prophesied that three days after rejecting Messiah, Israel would be regathered and revived. Hosea 6.2 After two days will He revive us. In the third day, He will raise us up and we shall live in His sight. Two days, 2,000 years. At the end of that time marks the third 1,000 years. That's the millennium. Amen. In the land. Amen. 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 The regathered Jews will remain in unbelief. And this is key because people will say those Jews over there today are in unbelief. They, that can't be of God. God said it would happen. Amen. Except for a remnant like J. Seculo and Zola Levitt and you know, Sidroth. <laughs> yeah, I believe he's saved. He's just goofy as all I get out. But uh, other than that remnant of Jewish believers, the Jews and the nation would remain in unbelief right up to the time Jesus returns, which is why in Zechariah 12.10 it says, I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. Look at it and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they're going to celebrate. Good times. Let's party. Yeah! That isn't what happened. It says, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, John 3.16, and shall be in bitterness for him. Why would they respond that way? Because they've been in unbelief right up to that moment. And they realized for 2,000 years, all but a remnant of Jews have been fools. Yes. As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn, like if your firstborn died. Now, unbelieving Israel in the land, a flag with a satanic symbol is exactly fitting. I have people say, oh, that flag, I wouldn't fly that flag. Well, I, I only fly the flag to show my allegiance with Israel. It's their flag. But that hexagram is an occult symbol. It's exactly what ought to be on the Israel's flag. If you go to Israel and do a little study online, you'll find out that the Kabbalah and the Talmud is what they follow. And those are satanic. Amen. 
And if you read the Talmud, it'll make you sick. The stuff they say about Jesus in there, and the, they, they say He's in hell and, and boiling in excrement in one passage in the Talmud. So it's fitting they'd have that symbol. You see, over and over, if you read your Bible and you go through it and you go through like Deuteronomy, I mean, God will say over and over, I'm going to save you from destruction, but not because of you. Not because you deserve it. Not because you're wonderful, because you're not. You're a bunch of stiff-necked, rebellious people. If it wasn't for Moses, would have killed your ancestors and you wouldn't even have been a nation anymore if Moses had not stood in the gap. I'm going to save you because of my word. I'm not a liar. I'm not a man that I should lie like you. Amen. And I said I'm going to keep you and I'm going to revive you and I'm going to put you in your land and your king, Messiah, is going to rule and reign for a thousand years and that's the only reason I'm doing this. And the Jews are the cockiest people on the planet. They think, they think they're the smartest people. They, they, you know, People say, oh, the Jews run everything. They run the banks and they run the media. Well... To an extent, that's true. I mean, there's some truth to that. They don't run at all. I mean, but there's a lot of it they do. And they think that they are the rulers of the world. Talk to them. They're arrogant. But that's why they won't submit to Jesus Christ and receive the free gift of salvation. They're stiff-necked. And God is demonstrating His grace by saving those people. Amen. And that nation... They're going to join with God's arch enemy in a covenant with death and hell. Yep. And He's still going to save a third of them. Amen. <laughs> and people say, He's going to kill two-thirds? Hey, He's going to save a third. Did you hear me? <laughs> if they, if I'll be glad I'm not their God. I, just, you know, the stuff they've done to God and the way they've... the blasphemy... God's grace, God's grace is, in Israel is incredible. An unbelieving nation of Jews in Israel is exactly what the Bible says we should see in the land of Israel right up to the time of the return of Jesus Christ. That land belongs to them, even in their unbelief. And you go against them because you think you're better than them, that they're cocky and they're arrogant and they're in unbelief. Amen, amen, amen. And you still better keep your mouth shut and you better not come against them or it'll cost you. Yeah. And they're blaming everything on climate change right now. And it, it, the blame is on our government, our U.S. State Department, our, our president, our secretary of state going around the world against Israel. Yeah. And you watch Sweden now. You know, Sweden let Putin land, let that Hu Chung Ming whatever in China land his plane, and then Shimon Perez from Israel, they refused to allow him to even fly into their airspace. Bunch of Jew-hating Swedes. Watch what happens to Sweden. <laughs> well, if he, they'd let him in, it wouldn't have been a problem. Bible believers believe the Bible. Amen? Amen? That's why we stand with Israel. Amen. I've had people tell me they hate Jews. And I said, well, you know, you, you need to pray about that. You shouldn't hate anybody um, just, for being a, just for being a Jew, you know, um, especially. But uh, you know what? Still doesn't matter. I don't care how you feel about them. You still obey. And you pray about how you feel and let God work on that, but in the meantime, don't go against God's Word and curse them because you're just killing yourself. It's like people tell me, you know, oh, my wife cheated on me, and if I find her, I'm going to blow her head off. I'm like, she ain't worth it. Why would you do that? You're just going to go to prison for the rest of your life over her? I've had women tell me, I'm going to poison him. <laughs> They'll catch you. You've seen these forensic shows that Mark was talking about? You don't get away with it anymore. But even if you could, it's still wrong. But I'm saying, you know, just for practical reasons, what good is that going to do you? That's the same thing when it comes to the Jews in Israel. They make you sick. Who's You'll see these guys. They're just filthy sinners like the rest of us. That's right. If Amen. If Abraham was a Chinaman and God revealed himself to a Chinaman back at that time, their Chinese ancestors would still fall away. Amen. Like the Israelites because they're Amen. filthy sinners like the rest yeah. of us. It kills me, though. I hear these. I got these. You know, I was raised around a bunch of white people. 
And, uh, you know, these white people I was raised around just think that the problem is everybody who's not white. Uh -huh. So to County, Ohio. Have you been there lately? You been there recently? The place is 95% white. And it is a trash hole. I love some of the people down there that I, I mean, I, I guess I sound spiritual and say I love them all. I don't know them all. I don't know them all. I mean, you, can, you know, I try to be practical and honest. I love people, but... You know what I'm saying? Just to say, oh, I love everybody. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but the, the people I know, I love. But the county is, a, is the armpit of the state. <laughs> and it's because of the people. Mm -hmm. There's so much drugs, prostitution, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, blasphemy, just like Sodom and Gomorrah down there. I'm just talking about my own family. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was seriously some of my family. Not very many, but... You better be glad they don't want your money. Yeah, my family. A, a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. No, I love you. Especially you, Grandma. <laughs> but I love his sign because these guys don't even believe the Bible. <laughs> These guys are Talmudics. Amen. But somebody was down there holding that sign up and asked them if they'd hold it and take a picture with it. It says, read the Bible, the land of Israel belongs to the Jews. Amen. <laughs> There's just a little irony there. <laughs> Bible rejectors reject Israel. Yes. You see the contrast there. Bible believers believe the Bible. Bible rejectors reject Israel. If you reject Israel, you're a Bible rejector. That's how simple it is. And there's my artwork. <laughs> Drawing men to Christ. <laughs> but this is Israel, and that's Jerusalem with the target. And this is going to happen. Read Ezekiel. They'll use that stuff for seven years to fuel as fuel. <laughs> There's a lot more. Thank you. Who's, Kim, did you say that? It was good. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Beholo. <laughs> That's my handwriting you're making fun of there. I'm surprised you read that much of it. Beholo! It's the Spanish. <laughs> now, all mockery aside, that is the reality and I don't know, some of you may not realize this, I just, want to remind, I just want to open your eyes to this. That is the way it is right now tonight. Oh yes. That place is ready to blow. And because our news media is more interested in ratings and they'll tell you who's sleeping with who and you know, they're more interested in some, what was it, a, uh, a legless uh, track runner killing his wife down in South Africa. You know, what was that guy's name? You know, and, uh, that's the stuff that's in the new news, in quotes. Meanwhile, people don't even realize their own government's cutting our throat. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the world is getting ready to come against Israel. God is going to destroy Bible rejectors who deny Israel, her land. We read this before in Jer uh, Joel 3, 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, remember our study of Armageddon, I will also gather all nations. That includes the United States of America. I'm sorry, but they, if you can't tell, that's going to happen already. There's your all nations. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. When God calls you my heritage you got something, and we don't got it. Yes, that's right. Israel does. For my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, that's happened in the past, and present tense, and parted my land. That's going on right now. John Kerry, that's all he's doing right now. Parting the land, divvying it up, and demanding Israel give it up. Now, the, this is going to close on this. The Apostle Paul says that uh, that. It, that is how it all ends. That's what it's supposed to say. Unbelieving Israel in the land, and they're only saved at the return of Jesus. I emphasize that again. People were saying that they can't be fulfilling prophecy because they're in unbelief. 
That's what it says is going to happen. We saw it in Zechariah and Romans 11.25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. He's talking to his Christian brethren. Yeah. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel. Until, excuse me, <laughs> until the fullness of the Gentiles come in and we're about there. And so, after the fullness of the Gentiles come in, all Israel shall be saved. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Pass the salt. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Read that last part with me. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Their sins don't get taken away to the end of the tribulation period. Anybody who thinks that the only way the Jews in Israel can be a fulfillment of prophecy is if they have a big revival and then name Billy Graham their prime minister, it's ridiculous. There's not going to be a great revival until Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation period and that's when He'll take away all their sins. Israel is in unbelief and her sins are not taken away until Jesus returns and saves the surviving remnant in the land of Israel. Now you know. That's a long one, I know. And I appreciate Thomas staying awake. <laughs> but I think we laid our... If Ed was here, I'd ask him as a defense attorney what he thought of the case, but I think it's closed. The land belongs to Israel.
a mystery to most of the earth's inhabitants. It tells us why we are here, reveals the mysteries of heaven and the horrors of hell, and the hero is God himself in our Lord Jesus Christ. Learn of the Ancient of Days by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to read that with me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And that just means unless you've just flippantly said, oh yeah, I believe. There have been many people have a preacher come to their door, knock on the door, and say, oh, say the sinner's prayer, and oh, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. And they don't mean it. Listen, folks, you know your heart. I don't. You know your mind. I don't. And no one else does. But if you have not been serious with God and really believed the gospel, you're on your way to hell. You have purposely put a wall of separation between you and God because you've not taken this seriously. 
But if you will take it seriously and really search your heart and say, I believe. I believe this gospel. And what is the gospel? Read verses 3 and 4 with me. Here it is. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's it. You seriously, before God, believe that He died for your sins and paid the full price. He rose from the dead and conquered sin and death. And by that alone, you have eternal life. The Bible says you are saved. But if not, then not. That's how simple it is. You know, religion stinks. Because religion muddies the waters. Religion makes you think that church membership or having a title or something like that is going to help you in dealing with your sin. Let me tell you something. You sinned against God, not the religious people, not the institutions who are giving you all these false promises. You sinned against God and what He says matters. And if you sinned against God, He is infinite. Your sin requires an infinite payment. That's why you can't work for it. You can work your entire life and do the best you can and it's still finite. You can never do enough works to pay for the cost of sin. And Jesus dying on the cross was an infinite payment for your sin. And that's why He's your only hope.